We are all aware of the impact felt by Haiti after the devastating 7.0 earthquake that shattered the island nation on January 12, 2010. It claimed the lives of over 250,000 people while leaving behind $14 billion worth of damages. Homes, hospitals, even the president's palace. Little was spared in the nation's capital of Port-au-Prince. But what hasn't been reported is the impact of this phenomenon on Haitian families here in the U.S., that is, until recently. <laughs> Research consulting firm Bendixson & Associates released the outcome of a New America media poll that focused on Haitian Americans and their reaction to the tragedy and the follow-up of aid to Haiti. Of those who were surveyed, 68% say they've lost loved ones in the earthquake, a sting felt by St. Augustine's college student, Maysac Dor Lewis. Most of, the, most of the loss came from my mother's side of the family, uh, cousins, extended family, relatives. We lost some people like, on her side of the family. And my mother's strong, so you know the way she conveyed it to me when I was calling back home, try to find out what happened. I, you know, I, I was fine because she sounded like she was, you know, she was handling it well. My sister, her husband, his mother and aunt, their whole house is like completely gone. That was Nazir Jean Baptiste, another St. Augustine student of Haitian descent. Both agree their families were deeply affected by the quake, but differ on one of the key questions in the poll. Haitian Americans were asked how they rated the response of the Haitian government in this crisis. 59% of those surveys disapprove of the Haitian government's handling of the crisis there, with particularly low marks for Haitian President René Preval. Nazir and Maysac see it a bit differently. And not only are the citizens of Haiti affected by this, the law enforcement people, they're affected by it also. So if I was a police officer in um, Haiti and an earthquake just hit, I have to think about my family also. I don't think they handled it, the situation too well, but I mean, it, it doesn't speak in volumes because they, they don't govern the country too well. It's not much you can do when, you know, the White House to where the president resides even falls apart, you know, and he, he has to resort to sleeping in the, in the airport. Haiti's the poorest and most undeveloped country, you know, in the Western Hemisphere. And both agree that they want to play a bigger role in rebuilding their family's country. I want to find a way to kind of leave a legacy behind us, something that they can count on. So like, so like, you know, starting a hospital or starting a school, you want to leave something that can last forever, gener and generations to come, not something that's like instant gratification, like money or food now, that can just be simply used and, and it's done. I have to do something, and plus my parents are going back there. Once they said their main mission now is just to raise us in the United States, and once they're done with us, they're going back there. So they're going to go contribute back, and most likely if they go back, I'm going to be giving to them and making sure that they're well taken care of while they're there too. So um, somehow, some way, I'll be contributing back to um, Haiti. Haiti's turmoil means there will have to be rebuilding for years to come. But with Haitian Americans like Nazir and Maysac, there's still hope for a bright tomorrow.